Uh, right, uh, tell us who you are um, and uh, <laughs> and something about yourself. Uh, my name's Sarah Place. Um, I'm running the Arc of Attrition for the first time ever. Um, I've run a few hundred milers before, but this is by far the hardest thing I've ever done. So tell us um, what your running experience is that brings you to the Arc. Um, I've run a few ultras, maybe like... 25 or so um but i just wanted to do something that's the hardest thing i've ever done and this is definitely it so i just wanted that i just love being on a start line and not knowing whether i'm going to get to the end it's kind of like a 50 50 whether i'm going to finish or not so um yeah and just experience the crazy weather that cornwall has to offer What's what's the hardest um, race that you've done so far in your career? Uh, the hardest race I've probably ever done um, is something called Lakes in a Day, which is um, about 50 miles from the top of the Lake District down to the bottom. And I did that quite early on in my ultra running career. And it was horrific. That was like the first experience I had of really bad weather. Um, so I imagine the conditions here are going to be quite similar to that so and you've also done um the uts 50k as well more recently haven't you how did you find that that was pretty horrific i'm not gonna lie just the conditions the underfoot conditions were awful but yeah i can't say i enjoyed that race if i'm being perfectly honest but i love being on the coast path so this is going to be this is much more my bag so um Given given that you've just described lakes in a day as horrific and UTS as horrific, <laughs> why on earth do you uh, do you want to do the arc? I can't remember what made me initially enter. I think I was just watching. I was on YouTube watching videos, watching your videos and Lloyd's videos, and there was just something about it. Um, yeah, it just had this vibe about it with the volunteers the archangels it just made it look amazing um and just the fact that it's going to be the hardest thing that i've ever attempted um you have done a few hundred milers before haven't you so you've done thames path you've done the north downs way 50 which is a tough one how did you manage in the, the the north downs way North Downs Way was okay. That was my second 100 mile race. I th- it took me quite a while though, but I enjoyed it. I think it was, I ran like the first 80 miles of that thinking, like feeling really good. And then it was just the last bit that was hard. But yeah, it took me like 20, 27 hours or something. Um, and then I went back to Thames Path the following year and did that, I managed to get that under 20. Have you ever DNF'd a 100? No. So every 100 mile race you've done, you've finished? Yes. Have you, (laughs) is there something in your brain which is uh, determined and dogmatic and refuses to give up? Yeah, I'd say so. Like I have DNF'd a race before, it wasn't a 100 miler, but um, it was Trans Grand Canaria actually a couple of years ago where I but I fell over really early on in the race and like cut my knee up and stuff and I just couldn't really carry on um but yeah I like with this race I want to finish so bad I don't want anything else other than to just finish this race I don't care how long it takes I just really want to get to the end so I think something's something pretty bad has to happen for me to not finish this race that's i I was going to ask you that um that do you have do you have a goal do you have a time goal for the architrician so you you're you're wanting to basically just finish 36 hours i'll be more than happy with 35 59 59 have you managed to get out and recce the course at all or or you've been on the coast path before haven't you but just not that not that area yeah so i have run a lot on the southwest coast path but none of the actual arc route, which I'm trying not to think too much about because I can't really do anything about it now. Um, obviously, I would have liked to have got down there and run parts of it, but I haven't. So I'm just gonna see what happens. I'm sure it. I was gonna say it kind of all looks the same, but I know this part of it is particularly gnarly. But I'll just take each 
each step as it comes, I suppose. <laughs> are there any? <laughs> are there any? But you have you have done some research, and ha- oh, is yeah. is there anything? Uh, what scares you the most? Which parts scare you? Which parts are you looking forward to? Which parts um, strike you as the kind of the the crux of the course? The bit that scares me the most is that section up to St Ives, just because I've read so much about it and how tricky it is. Um, but at the same time, I almost feel like that's where the race is. If I can get to St Ives, then I've kind of cracked it so to speak um and also the dunes i've heard so many scary things about the dunes but by the time i get there it should be light so it won't be too bad hopefully um and just everything that comes with running an ultra just the fatigue the tiredness the muscle soreness the mud the yeah the stomach issues everything that comes with it obviously is uh quite scary to think about but Tell me about your nutrition. Have you got a plan? Uh, yeah, it's kind of. I'll be um, just taking on board a bit of everything, to be honest, like loads of food. Um, and then I'll have Ben as my crew. So I'll have some hot, well, we've got like a little stove that we're taking. So he can maybe heat up some hot water and put it in a pot noodle or something every now and then. And I'll use the checkpoints, get some hot food there. Um and tailwind for like for the latter stages of the race where I'm not really going to want to eat that much. But I kind of just see what I fancy at the time and I'm very flexible with my nutrition plan generally. And uh, in terms of kit, um do you have a favourite pair of shoes that you want to wear? Are you going to change shoes? Uh, what about your jacket? What, uh, what kind of stuff are you wearing? Uh, yeah, with my shoes, I'm... The shoes that I wanted to wear, I actually got a massive hole in last week, so I've been frantically trying to find another pair of shoes um, to have a few pairs, a couple in the car to change into if I need to. Um, And they're the Ultra Lone Peaks. And uh, yeah, I I mean, I'll have loads of socks and shoes in the car, so if I feel like I need to change shoes, then I will. How do you get on with the Ultras? Because they haven't got a drop on them, have they? No, they're fine for me. I mean, I've worn them for quite some time so uh i know some people have quite a few issues when they first start out but they're fine they're fine for me i just like the extra room in the front because i have quite wide feet uh so i just don't want it to risk my toes rubbing my shoes or anything like that i just like having a lot of space and they accommodate my big feet at the front well, listen, Sarah, by the time that people watch this video, uh, you will be out on the course. Oh, I hope uh, I am still out there by the time people are watching. I'm sure I will be. Best of luck. If you want to if you want to check out uh, Sarah Place, uh, then uh, go and look at her dot. Uh, she will be right now somewhere out on the coast path. Uh, stay with us until we're back live from the Southwest Coast Path and the Arc Patrician. Good luck, Sarah. Thank you.